Welcome to JMO with Josh and Joe. It is Tuesday, August 23rd. And Joe, we have officially experienced the last weekend without football until February. Thank God. Let's clap, clap it up for everybody. We grinded through the dead zone of sports. We have officially made it. Week zero is coming this weekend. This is this goes out to every single one of you. All of you. All of you sports loving fans that had to go through this entire dead zone with just nothing but like pickleball and you know lacrosse and just the terrible sports Baseball. out there. <laughs> we got the Little League World Series. I mean, we have finally we're got. Trying. We're finally back on track. I mean, we made w- it. The WNBA. You know, we had some exciting stuff. <laughs> We got, actually, we have some exciting stuff about that later on. But, Joe, we have made it officially. Week zero of college football starts next this weekend. Um, I do want to say I, I have been watching a little bit of preseason. I know you have too. We get yep. we we got a little bit too high on the preseason stars. I know I know I have, and I know you have as well. Um. We gotta take we gotta take it down a notch. We got too excited. I've I've gotten suckered in every single preseason because especially from a fantasy football standpoint, like I just like all my all everything inside of me wants to draft Isaiah Likely, the tight end out of Ra- the Ravens, like number two, you, you know, second round. But you, you likely will. Yeah, I, <laughs> like, I likely will. Da-da. But no, it does. It's got me thinking like. Oh man, you know Danny Etling's actually a really good quarterback. Did you see his first game, preseason game? Like, holy shit! No, no. There's a reason why he's on the like he's the third string quarterback for the Green Bay Packers. It's like I do this every fucking year. Every year we every. Get fall we fall into that same same trap of yep. just like they, because as a the thing, there's going to be somebody who's going to overdraft somebody that was a star in preseason. Now, granted, it it might not be like you know the first five rounds, but, you know, for somebody who's a reserve and getting drafted, like, you know, towards the middle or end of the of the fantasy draft, it's going to happen, I, and I, it's just going to be t- right. a t- total failure. Right, and, well, here's the thing. See, I think, like, there's people like George Pickens who are actually, like, doing well in preseason, and I think it'll translate over to the, to the actual NFL season. Yeah. But I think those are, like... Those few exceptions, you know what I'm saying, and like I, I, I think George Pickens will get picked way too early, um, but again, I think he's gonna pan out. I think he's gonna turn into like a, a easy not wide receiver one, especially in Pittsburgh. Like I know Chase Claypool is there, but I don't know, man. This guy's that talented. I think I'm. We're thinking more along the lines of the ones that are the unknown names, like George Pickens. Is he's became a household name, and he's. I mean, he was drafted in the second round, so obviously, like. People know about him, but I'm talking about like these guys that you just don't, you never heard about, and oh, they, yeah. they were fourth, fifth, uh, undrafted uh, free agents. Um, those are the ones that I'm talking about that get, get right, your they, attention. They You're get like in when like the third strings in there, and they make an amazing play, but mm-hmm. then and you completely forget that they're going against the third string. Exactly, you know what I'm saying. So it's just like yeah, and it's, then it's somebody deceiving. thinks they're they're very cunning and you know got the inside information that they you know got a gem, a gold mine. Yeah, yeah. And what it did doesn't you, be, what, what did you say watching preseason was like? So yeah, so I basically I'm watching preseason and then it's yeah it reminds me of the USFL. Like, in what way? It, like, I'm watching football, but I don't know who I'm watching. <laughs> like, I have no yes, idea uh, who I'm watching. <laughs> of course. <laughs> like, that's what, I mean, and that's that's so true. That's how I feel about watching preseason as well. I got these third string guys that, like, if they didn't go, if they didn't play football in the SEC, I don't, I probably don't really know too, too much about them. And you get more lost as the game goes on. Yes, yes. Like, it's, uh, it's one of those games that starts off where you're like, oh, I know what's going on. And then by the end of the third quarter, you're like, I don't know who the fuck this quarterback is. <laughs> I don't even know who you are. I don't know your name, dude. And then you got Josh Rosen coming in, throwing seven for 20 for 85 yards. Like, how do you do that? How do you continuously suck that bad, Josh? <laughs> you are just so terrible. So terrible. So bad. Um, All right, well, let's get into it. Uh. I know we got the Deshaun Watson thing. Well, we're going to get to that in a second. Of I'd, course, of course. I want to start off with the week one slate. And if you don't think that the NFL is just the giant puppet master of all of us and the NFL in general, if you don't think they have a hand in everything that's going on, just listen to this week one slate. Okay? We have the Browns versus Baker Mayfield and the Panthers. Okay? Yep. You don't think that was planned? That was 100% planned. Yep. We got the Seahawks versus Russell uh, Russell Wilson in Denver. Okay, 
That was planned. Oh, that definitely that was definitely planned. planned. Um, that's not as much drama because they knew he was out, but it's still going to be drama. And now, and now with Zach Wilson out, like most likely going to be out week one, we got Joe Flacco against the Ravens. Yep. Like, dude, this is the NFL is 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 amazing at what they do. They they it's, love it's in, it's un, unbelievable. They are absolutely obsessed with the re, the player return back to home. Oh yeah, uh, storyline return uh, revenge games. The revenge games. Yes. They, That's they, what it they is. They love the revenge games. It's a great story. Yep. Um. Now with the Browns versus Baker and the Panthers, there won't be any Deshaun Watson, which I was alluded to earlier. He got a. The NFL appeal, again, like, this is the NFL just having total and complete control over everything, including the law. You know how they always say no one is above the law? Yes, 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 yes. The yes. National Football League is 100% above the law. If you don't think they planned this meticulously from the beginning, then you are c- completely wrong. They yep. they gave out six games in the first, in the, like, they... they I guarantee you they had a hand in giving out the six games. I know that Judge Sue Robinson was was the person who officially handed it out. No, 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 no. Nope. No, 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 no. I'm woke on this. That was the NFL. Yep. And then, of course, he's going to get an 11-game suspension. They, they, they're they not going to suspend him for the whole year. Why would they do that? They're, Why would they do that? There's I no storyline in that. And I love how they, like, they're... Like threatening with like it's an empty threat where they're like, yeah, we're gonna get him the full season. We're yeah. gonna get him the full season, and it comes out, oh, well, we got him eleven games, you know. Oh, and, and then knowing what, all the while that oh yeah, and what that was who who's that twelfth game against? <laughs> who's the twelfth game against? It's I mean like everybody another revenge game. Everybody knows knows it now because they've seen it, but please, if you don't think the NFL meticulously planned this out, then you are then you're. In for a rude awakening. Your your hand your head is in the sand. Yes, my friend. Yes. Now I also say this, and I'm I'm a I'm a little hypocritical because I I think all this was planned out, but I have to convince myself that the games are not fixed. If I if I think the games are fixed, then I can't enjoy it. No. Well, then it becomes WWE. Right. It, it does in a sense. It's just like Roger Goodell, just like just. Creating all of these stories and all of these different outcomes of games that that I guess we we just don't have any control over, and he has all the control. And he has all the control. And by Roger Goodell, I mean all the owners. Yes, because we know that even though Roger Goodell is the puppeteer of the NFL, the you know, owners are the puppeteer. Of, well, he he's a robot. He's a robot. He's a robot, and they have the remote control that controls his, his brain. Yeah, and they program him all sorts of stuff. Yeah. So, I mean, the Deshaun Watson suspension it was eleven games. It should have been the whole season. He shouldn't be playing in the NFL anymore. But um, he got it. He got a nice little chant from the Jacksonville Jaguars when he played them. Yes. You heard what they said? Yes, that was a good one. You sick fuck! They just kept <laughs> chanting, "You sick fuck." <laughs> Good old Jacksonville fans, man. Y'all, that has a nice rhythm to it, it too. Does. It does. <laughs> well done to them. Yeah. Well done Good to job. them. They haven't had much to cheer about since Blake Bortles, but I'm glad they found that. Yeah, I'm surprised they know how to cheer. Yeah, me too. Oh, man. <laughs> that was a shot. Um, let's see. Let's get to some of the training camp news. I you, So I don't think that enough people were talking about the, the mushroom helmet looking things. Oh well, we had some people talking I know, I, about right, it. Right, right, but I, it took a, it took like the Kelsey brothers to say something because they it, they look ridiculous. I I love that you pointed that out because the NFL tried to just slip that in. Yeah, and let they it, did try and slip. <laughs> they that tried in. to slip that in on us. Yeah. So pull a little fast one. Oh please! But, <laughs> but yeah, we definitely took notice. Like, what the hell is going on here? They look so freaking weird. Yep. What? I'm I'm pulling up the uh, the quotes right now, but the um like you were saying, the Kelsey brothers. Oh yeah. He's um you wanna read it? Yeah, so so Travis came out, um he was the first one that made a comment. He's like, We're just out here wearing mushroom helmets that are doing nothing but adding weight to our heads. So Which, a little bit I more. I think he has a uh, he has a point. I mean, yeah. at, at some point, yeah, sure, it provides more co- cushion. But when you hit somebody, you have extra weight going into your neck that you're not used to. Yeah, I don't I don't like it. Yeah. So and then you want to say Jason's Jason's follow up yeah, comment well, on that so one. Jay, and then Jason said they say the Guardian caps add twenty percent protection. Figured the bubble wrap gave me another two or three. <laughs> I love, he's, he's and this my, man he's this man favorite. is wearing straight bubble wrap on his head. Bubble. If you haven't seen the picture, check it out. It is. Fucking hilarious, and I mean they—they just—they're both just clowns. They both just just love clowning people. Yeah. Um. Let's see. We got Tom Brady back in action. That was fun. Everybody thought he was on the Masked Singer. 
took, don't know why. But he took eleven day uh, break. Yeah, what was he? Do- I don't. I don't know what what he was doing. I uh, from the, there's speculation that he was in the Bahamas with his family. Um, uh, I guess the mask mask singer singer blah, singer makes a little bit of sense. Um, I too. don't. I don't. I don't see why he would ever do that. What what good would that do him? I I mean he's not that type of personality that he Hell would no. he would he, he would be one that just still since he's still playing football to focus on football. It makes more sense that he's in the Bahamas because either he's fucking his wife or he's playing football. Those are the only two things he knows how to do. That's that's very correct. That's his life. But did you see A B complaining about it? Oh yeah, love it. Of course he did. It's a deleted tw- uh, tweet now. Oh, he deleted it. Yeah, I deleted didn't see it. that. Of course he did. But how he it was unfair that you know Tom Brady you know. Gets to take off and no one bats an eye, but whenever you know he needs to take off for mental health, and, uh, you know mental health. Yeah, no, it's. I think it, I think it, it, Antonio Brown just has multiple personalities. So like one part to like you know that that sh- that movie. What was it? It's like twenty three something. The guy has twenty three different personalities, and it was a meme going around. He said that wasn't me. That's Patricia. Oh yeah, that's yeah, exactly yeah. what Antonio Brown's saying right now. He's like that wasn't me. That that was uh, Clown Tonio Brown. That was Clown Tonio Brown. Clown Tonio this Brown. is Antonio Brown, so he deleted it. Yep. And yeah. Um, but I, my thing is, is like if you are in the league for twenty three years, or 22, 23 years, I, you kind of deserve to like and w- are considered one of the greatest of all times. You kind of get to do whatever you want. And he was lucky enough to watch Antonio Brown play. Yeah. I mean, LeBron James gets to do whatever he wants. Right. Like, you you earn that status. The only thing LeBron James can't do is watch LeBron James play live. Yeah. That's it. That's it. He can't do that. So, honestly, Tom Brady gets to watch AB and LeBron James play live. I think Tom Brady's the luckiest man in the world. He's the luckiest man in the world. I think he is. Not. It's not because he's banging a sexy-ass Giselle that makes a lot more money than him. Anyways... <laughs> Moving on. Tom Brady's back. Tom Brady's back. He's going to lose to the Saints twice. Um, <laughs> let's see. There wasn't too, too much NFL stuff. I did see this no, this um, picture up on my timeline. It said, most interceptions in NFL history. And it, number one's Paul Krause, which I, I don't know who that is. But he's got 81. And then Emlyn Tunnel, which, don't again, don't know who that is. And then number three is Rod Woodson. For the Steelers, which with 71. This is my favorite. This is the whole reason why I, I got this, uh, or I screenshotted this article. Number four for the Arizona Cardinals, Night Train Lane. Night Train. Night Train Lane. That's a, that's part I of... fucking love that. That should be a, a, a name game right there. Yeah, that's a good one. I that We need, again, bring back nicknames. Joe and I are all about it. Yes. Um, And then Ken Riley's number five. Charles Woodson... Is tied with Ken Riley for number five with sixty five all time. Nice, Charles Woodson. Then you got Ed. He was dirty. Oh, he was. And then you got Ed Reed, Ronnie Lott, Darren Sharper, Darren Sharper, um, and then Dick LeBeau. But yeah, I I I needed a night train lane. That was a that was a good one for me. I loved it. Um, but yeah, I I thought Charles Woodson would be like number one. It's funny that you mentioned him. I just watched that thirty for thirty, um, with him and Tom Brady about the tuck rule, Mm -hmm. and they were. They got them both in a room to watch it and then discuss it. It literally just turned into a yelling match between Charles Woodson and Tom Brady. I love it. it I was, love it. It was awesome. <laughs> I would love to watch Tom Brady and Charles Woodson yell at each other. They the competitive was not lost. Yeah, They're like between both of them during that time, they, like just because they weren't on the field, like none of it was like right. You know what would be the ultimate is to hear Michael Jordan and Tom Brady get in an argument. It would just be like the ultimate argument. I mean, like they just none, neither one of them would ever back down. No, absolutely ever. not. Ever back down. So it, it would just, it would honestly, it would just be a perpetual argument. Yes. It would just never stop. Yeah. No, I, I, I'd, I'd, I'd pay to see that. I'd pay to watch like 30 I'd, minutes of it. We could do a 30 for 30 on it. And then when they keep going and never stop, I'm just, I'm out. Yeah. Yeah. Well, at some point, yeah. You're yeah. just going to have to be like, all right. What else you got on the NFL? Uh, well, let's see what we've got here. We've got a couple of deals that went do- uh, went down. Um, yeah, or, we did. Yeah, we got uh, Derwin James inks in his seventy four point or seventy six point four million dollar deal. Forty two of it guaranteed. Well deserved. Well deserved. I think it the timing of it. I think the timing of it is good for the Chargers. Yep, I, I agree. Think, I think the deals when that come right before the season is probably one of the best ones because otherwise the. If you get it during the off season, the player just like starts celebrating, and then it just like loses focus. Whereas he 
he still was grinding, still, you know, during the off season, still trying to get that that big time deal. Yep. Got it during the uh, right before the season. Now the season starts. It's like you know, win it, big, dude. It's like when an old man takes Viagra. If he takes it earlier in the day, it doesn't get laid for the four hours. It just kind of goes away. Exactly. He took it right before he's about to have sex, so it's going to be boom. He's going to be juiced he's up. He's getting a boner right now. Yes. Got it. So dude, yeah, he's going to be nasty. So, the Chargers are going to be fucking disgusting. I was about to say uh, points to the uh, Chargers defense right now, dude. Oh man, they're going to be nasty. They're, they're going to win. Stock the, is up. They're going to win the AFC West. I. I I'm pre- I'm, that's what I'm predicting. They're, Ooh, predicting it now? Oh, yeah, for sure. The Chargers win in the AFC West. It'll be Chargers, pa- uh, Chiefs, Chargers, Chiefs, Raiders, Broncos. There, I said it. Okay. I said it. Um, let's see what else you got. All right. Um, let's see what else we right, have here. That's all I got ex- until I think, college. Yeah, I think that was about it. Um, oh, I'm uh, all, all on the uh, Detroit Lions train. I watched the first episode of Hard Knocks and I am fucking pumped. <laughs> Holy shit! Right? Holy shit! I'm ready to run through a brick wall for for Dan Campbell. Yes. Um, <laughs> the man's doing up downs with his team. Yeah, dude. Well, what's the guy's name? Williams, the running back. Jamal Williams. Jamal Williams, dude. His fucking speech in the in the huddle, just like I was moved. I was like, I was like, God damn! I'm starting like tearing up a little bit i'm like fuck dude passion man i was fucking gonna love say, it dude. yeah the, the the detroit lions is like just made of straight passion yeah man i so i hope they i hope they win i hope that you know what? i hope they get to the nfc championship and i mean unfortunately they're just gonna lose they're gonna lose to the saints but hey that's a that's a great improvement Ru- yep. getting it getting to the nfc championship from the year they had last year mm-hmm. great improvement good job detroit but Saints are going to the Super Bowl. I mean, yeah, so they won't already, be able to. They won't be able to done. go to the Super Bowl. It's okay. It's yeah. okay. There's always next year. Well, I mean, it's it's taking steps. Yes. Taking steps. Baby steps. Baby steps. I mean, that was a large baby step, but it's okay. <laughs> All right, let's get to college football. Um, Joe. Um, uh, we're fucked. We're fucked for the, the next rich, eight, eight years. The rich keeps getting richer. The, we are so fucked for the next eight years. I saw this Nick Saban deal, eight-year, $93.6 million contract, and I just thought, fuck my life. Alabama's just going to keep throwing money in years towards him. And the thing is, is like I think we've discovered, and actually they took advantage because he did make this comment, but we discovered Nick, uh, Nick Saban's biggest weakness, our biggest fear, uh, is probably the better way to put it. Okay. His biggest fear is boredom. Oh, so if he gets bored, he's done. He's done. So, mm. like, he does not, and that's why he hasn't retired yet, and he probably won't retire for a while. And the, the Alabama took advantage of it, so they were like, hey, well, you know, so you won't get bored eight more years. Eight years, and then we'll make you, obviously, the highest paid coach of all time. All time. And, yeah, of course, he's going to take it, because, like you said, he's just, he's a, he's a, He's a competitive guy. He's a fighter. He's just like Tom Brady. He's, yep. he's they're just made they're just built differently. Yes. They're built differently. They might not be the strongest, but mentally they are by far more superior than than 99.99999% of the people out there. Their fear of boredom is so strong that they just will not quit. Right. Yeah. Cuz if they do, they're going to be like Bear Bryant. You remember Bear Bryant when he retired or he 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 came out and said he's like when I retire from football, I'm just going to die. And he retired from football, and three weeks later, he was dead. He was died. He died. Yeah. He literally, football was his life. Yes. Like, and I'm not saying that's going to happen to Nick Saban, but it's like kind of, a, it's it's a kind of similar. I don't know. Um, I mean, the man's been doing it his whole life. Yeah, but we're fucked. We're all fucked. Everyone in college football is fucked for the next eight years because Alabama's going to get all the fucking recruits. Nick Saban and Alabama are going to figure out a way to throw as much money, if not more money, to all these NIL deals and. We're just, we're just, we're screwed. We're screwed. Well, at least we get more Saban Jimbo action. Uh, yeah, I hope so. <laughs> I hope so. Man, and like I just see, I'd see LSU winning, beating Alabama maybe two out of the next eight years. It well, sucks. I, I, I hope Brian Kelly can can do more than I'm. I'm. I'm just. I'm so sad right now, and like I'm so just sunken in I can and see like that. a half a human being right now because of that. Uh, don't worry. Whenever, whenever LSU plays Florida State, I'm gonna go right back to LSU is gonna win every single game. Of but, course. But right now, I'm just I'm in I'm in my feelings. Well, and Brian Brian Kelly has that chip on his shoulder. He, he does. He he has that chip on his shoulder when it comes to Nick Saban. He's he he 
he positioned himself right exactly where he wants to be. Right, right. He wants to be in a position to beat the best on yeah. a consistent basis. And, and he hasn't, I don't think he's played Saban since that 2012 national championship, right? No, he played him again in the playoffs. In the playoffs, okay. Yeah. Yeah, he got smoked. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, now he'll have more. He'll have better recruits because he did what he could at Notre Dame with what he was given. But yeah, speaking of Notre Dame, they're fucked. Game one, they are <laughs> very, very highly overrated. What are they? Number seven? Number six? Uh, number five? Number five? Yeah. They're going to get just absolutely crushed by Ohio State. Yeah. It's not even going to be a game. It's not even like. I'll take the over on that game, and I'll take Ohio State plus 35 if that's what it was. Like, I, it's insane. I really do think they're going to get just blown out. But anyways, speaking of the Big Ten, they um they inked a historic $7 billion deal with Fox, CBS, NBC, ESPN. Yeah, I saw that. It's going to be weird. It is going to be it's weird. It's going to be weird here in the CBS um, – what do you call it? The, the CBS music yeah. and it not be an SEC game. Yeah. If I hear Vern Lundquist s- announce a Big Ten game, it's going to sound weird to me. Yeah. You know but, what I'm saying? Yeah. He probably won't because he's done. He retired. Oh, but, I didn't know he retired. Yeah. Oh, so It'll be. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, then that's good. So at least you will have that on your side. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We won't have to do that because I, yeah, I'd probably freak out too if he starts, you know, naming – or Ohio State, Michigan starts coming out of his mouth. Yeah. It's like he's, he's like, oh, CJ Stroud is the best quarterback. No, stop, Vern. Come on. I'm, I'm good with Gary Danielson going over there. Yeah, he kind of sucked. Yeah, he was I, fun to make fun of, though. He was. He was like the Chris Collinsworth of the, the college of football. Of college football. Yes. yes. It was great. It, he, it, th- and those types of announcers you kind of need. It makes the uh, makes their counterpart look even better. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Like Joe Buck, Troy Aikman. You know, Chris Collinsworth, Al Michaels. It's it's the hot it's the hot girl effect. It's uh basically you have to yes. surround yourself with fat friends so you look hotter. Or at least have a, at least have that one duff. You need yes. that designated ugly fat friend. Yes. And then it just makes you look a hundred times better. Exactly. Okay. Cool. Well, uh, let's see. Anything else in college football before we get to OT dish? College football starts this week. I don't know. Week zero, baby. Yep. Um, Austin, who we got? Ha- Austin PV and Western Kentucky are the official first game that kicks everything off. And then the big conferences have Nebraska and Northwestern They're, and Wyoming versus Illinois. I think Nebraska versus Northwestern, isn't that in London or something? Uh, I don't know. I didn't check that out. Uh-huh. We'll have to go check it out. It might be. That'd actually be kind of cool. A college game in uh, in London? Uh-huh. I think it was like, I think that's what it was. But we'll we'll, we'll figure that out. Um, so yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I'm probably going to bet on all those games. Nice. Definitely going to bet on all those games. Bet the over. Bet the over? Yep. Defenses aren't ready. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. They are I, I keep forgetting. Yep, yep. Bet the over. Oh, especially in college. Yes, bet the over. Uh, opening weekend, always bet the over. Defenses uh, have no f- film on anybody. Yep. You bet the over. Yep, yep, yep. College more so than pros because pros can look at, like, you know, last year's film and stuff like that. Like, college football you can, but you have so many so many new freshmen coming in that are just nasty. And then you got these sophomores that are becoming juniors, juniors becoming seniors that you may not have seen last year because they didn't play. Because not, it was a not to mention the transfer portal. Transfer portal has been going fucking wild. Yes. It's going to be exciting. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm pumped. I mean, honestly, I'm, I've always been a diehard college football. We both have. Yes. So, yeah, this is, a, this is an exciting time for me. All righty. You ready to get to OT Dish? Well, let's do it. All right. Uh, let's see. I have, in 1923, Palvo Normie. On this date in 1923, Palvo Normie, Nicknamed the Flying Finn of Finland, runs the world record for one mile in a in a four minutes and ten seconds in Stockholm. The record stood until 1931. Okay, now the Flying Finn, dope nickname. Yes, he, he and like I'll, at first I was like when I first saw it I was like man that sounds a little more like a, a swimmer nickname, but he's from Finland, yeah, so it a, works. The Flying Finn, flying it's fin. great. Now the crazy part is. The, the world record was four minutes and ten seconds. That was back when doctors thought, like, oh, it's impossible to go sub-four-minute uh, mile. And then I, I can't remember who did it. 
but one person did it and then like within the next like two weeks or something 10 people did it yeah so yeah i think the current record right now is three minutes and 43 seconds that's been recorded yeah, it's yeah that's insane that is and insane. then we had this guy just go four minute miles to uh for an entire marathon you saw that that's below insane. two hours that's insane yeah averaging like four minute miles it's <laughs> fucking wild um all right you want to do one yeah, we'll go back and forth. Yeah, we had to. I, I think we had to scrub on this one on to get some good stuff because it's like right in that teeter point of like football hasn't started. Um, there's still some of the the Olympics usually kind of end around this time. So, but in I had to go all the way back to 1883. The uh, get this Philadelphia Quakers. Oh, I love it. The Philadelphia Quakers. They made a lot of oatmeal. <laughs> well, they also made 27 errors in a baseball game. Oh, man. 27 errors against the Providence Grays, both MLB teams. So, um, yeah, interesting. Those have uh, di- kind of died off, but in a 28-0 right. to zero shutout defeat. So get, But get this. So they did 27 errors, but while pitches, walks, and pass balls count as errors right so they um, they included all those in there yeah and uh, that was prior to the 1888 season so yeah so that I, I i'm assuming there was a council in 1888 and was like man we're making way too much errors we're looking like jabronis out here yeah like this is making us look bad so yeah. they had to eliminate a lot of the mlb can't look like a bunch of jabronis no absolutely not it's like no. it's like these guys make that much especially if you have it labeled as error yeah you know like these these guys are supposed to be professionals mm-hmm. yeah all right well i got another one it's on this date in 1933 this was the first televised boxing match. Sixth round exhibition at a uh, broadcasting house in London between middleweights Archie Sexton and Laurie Raitery. Raitery? Raitery. Now, this is the best part. This one aired, uh, was aired by <laughs> BBC TV. BBC TV. Big black cock television. <laughs> That's what it, that, that's what it is. It's BBC TV. Yeah. Big black cock television. Yep. Yep. Of course. That's <laughs> what it was. First boxing match. Yeah, that's that's kind of funny. Do you want to go? <laughs> yeah, I'll I'll go on this one. Let's go uh, back to 1947. Oh, I had this one too. It's... First baseball little league World Series, which is kind of a fitting time since we're going right. through that right now. Right. This is my favorite. But yeah, uh, Williamsport, Pennsylvania. Was where the uh, and then what was it? The uh, did you have um, the, what was it? The Menard? No, Mid- no, it's it's the Maynard Midgets beat Lockhaven All Stars sixteen to seven. Jeez, the Midgets. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that's not a name you would see around nowadays. Yeah, I don't think we could do that nowadays. The Maynard Midgets, <laughs> especially it's for funny, a little it's league. It's funny. It's a little league <laughs> baseball team. Oh man. That's fucking hilarious. They, hey, they, a, they, they won, a, though. They had a sense of humor back they then. They did. They did. They did. We don't have a sense of humor anymore nowadays. Yeah, um, yeah that was funny. I uh, Let's see. On this date in 1982, Seattle Mariner pitcher <laughs> Gaylord Perry ejected for throwing a spitter. A spitter. Yeah. Not a I splitter. Had, a no, spitter. A spitter. I had to look this. I mean, I, I had an idea of what it was, and it, I, it ended up being correct. But, yeah, they used to spit on the ball, you know, to, like, Make it. I guess it, it flew. It flies differently when there's when you tamper with it. I guess it's just like nowadays they'd use pine tar, shit like that. Um, yeah, Gaylord Perry. I just I, I chuckled at that because I'm immature. <laughs> right. But, yeah. What, what, what's your next one? Uh, that was that was it for okay. me. Okay. Um, I have an honorary one. This is a. Uh, this is an RIP in peace to Kobe Bryant. This today would have been his 44th birthday. 44th birthday. Yep. So RIP a legend, um, which is a good segue to NBA because um, that's next on my list. We have the uh, the KD drama is finally coming to an end. But is it? It is, well, potentially coming to an end. Um, this was definitely a big W for the owners. The Apparently KD and Joe Psy... Uh, Steve Nash and I can't remember the GM's name. Um, they got together, talked it out, and KD's officially staying. He's officially staying a Brooklyn Net. Yes, for this year. Yes, correct. So, which I I also think that it was just they did that because it gave some the Nets some leverage 
uh, for the trade deadline. Because if they it, like with KD wanting out, the Nets had no leverage when it came to trading. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So like now that it seems like KD wants to be back with the Nets, they might have a little more leverage come trade deadline. They might be able to get something from a team that might be making a push to get to the playoffs or that uh, are making a push to get to the championship it's game. The typical typical girl uh, girl. Uh, Gosh, I can't even. I'm just gonna botch this one. But no, it's uh, typical how you get a girl to want you. Oh yeah, you say you don't want them anymore, and yep. then and they, then it makes them want you even more. Yeah, gotcha. they, they well, want yeah, whatever you can. They yeah, can't have exactly. That's just so. Yeah, you're right. It, it's it potentially has ended, but it it hasn't ended. They probably that's probably what they did because they met up in Los Angeles. They probably had sat sat them down to a nice fancy dinner. I would have to say some milk steak, you know. Something really classy. With a side of jelly beans. Yes. And basically we're like, hey, look, we're going to say that you're content, but we just want to make sure we, – we just want to seem like you're out of reach for people because that's when they're going to want you the most. Right. And then you, he's going to have to play well. I mean, it's a win-win because he's going to have to play well to show teams that he can still compete like the Kevin Durant that we all know. Yeah. And once he does that – the Nets will have their leverage back, and the the, the who, who knows that that's just my my opinion. I think like he, he there might he might actually have bought into uh, the Nets again. I don't think so, um, but yeah, I think it's a W for for Josiah and honestly all the owners in the NBA because they kind of stood their ground with arguably one of the the best players in the NBA right now and of all time. Yep. and just kind of. And they won. They they won. They told him no. They told him no, and they said, fuck off. We're sticking with what we got. You're going to have to just deal with it, and that's essentially what KD did. So good good, good news for the owners. I think they're starting to take some of the power back. Um, but, yeah, I guess the KD drama ends for right now. Um, let's see. We had LeBron James get a uh, $97.1 million extension through 24-25 season. Big win for Lakers. Yeah, but – also, like it was pretty meticulously planned out as well for him too, right? Yeah, it, it had him in mind to still play with Bronny, whenever. right? Because Bronny, Bronny's going into his senior year of high school, and then so he's got this year, and then next year he's got to do a year in either the G League or college, and then he'll be in the NBA. That's when LeBron James's contract will be up. So it's 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 really good planning by LeBron James. I mean, obviously he wanted to, he said he wanted to play with Bronny, so. Here it is, and this keeps this keeps uh, LeBron in LA rather than some going somewhere else. Before, oh yeah, before that uh, the Bronny situation happens, the Bronny Lebron. Yeah, combo. I mean, I mean the the Lakers still aren't going to win as long as they have Russell Westbrook. He's the, he's again. I'm going to keep saying this until it's I'm blue in the face, but he is the cancer. I've said I, I keep I've said this for the last like four fucking years. Russell Westbrook is the cancer. He is a very very good player, but if you want to win a championship, he will it, it, he will not allow you to. Yeah, no, that's you make an excellent point. I mean, he looks like the cancer. He dribbles like the cancer. He is the cancer. Yeah, he, he he's a he's a weird looking dude. I mean, he's he's a baller. He's a baller, but dude, I because I saw his rookie, I saw highlights from his rookie season. Like they were floating around. I guess that people are trying to like pump him up, make him look good, but he was fucking nasty. I mean, he still is nasty. He's so he fast. He's just fucking, yeah, he, nobody can stop him. Nobody. When he takes it to the rim, he's like prime LeBron James, just a little smaller. Yeah. It's wild. Um, but yeah, you got anything else on LeBron James? Uh, no, that's about it. All right. I, uh, just real quick before we get to, I know we got to go get to Dennis Rodman, but I saw this. I took a screenshot of this. Um, the last 15... NBA Rookie of the Years. Just take a listen. This is from 2008 to now. We have Kevin Durant, Derrick Rose, Tyreek Evans, Blake Griffin, Kyrie Irving, Damian Lillard, Michael Carter-Williams, Andrew Wiggins, Carl Anthony Towns, Ma- Malcolm Brogdon, Ben Simmons, Luka Doncic, John Morant, LaMelo Ball, Scotty Barnes. If you want to know who's going to be a good fucking player in the NBA, look at the Rookie of the Year. If, if, they're, if they are the Rookie of the Year... There is a ninety percent chance that they are going to be one of the better players in the NBA. It is just it's that's just the, those are the numbers. Those are the numbers. If you just listen to that list I just said, those are all all stars. Almost all of them, except for maybe two players. Yeah, it's insane. So you just look at rookie of the year, and boom, you have a stud, a stud. 
All right, now let's get to Dennis Rodman. So, <laughs> Dennis Rodman, he is he's back. He's back. He's, he's, he's back. all the way back. He's back. He it's it's awesome because he's gonna go and he's gonna free Brittany Griner. He's he's the hero that we didn't realize that we needed. Yeah, we another hero we had no idea we needed, <laughs> and the most unlikely hero as well. Unlikeliest of heroes. A, a, apparently, he's friends with Putin or like some people in Putin's company. He's yeah, he's he's made trips over to Russia before. He's he's got yeah, he's close with some people over there. So he is gonna. Man, I hope to God he brings back Brittany Griner. That would be just like a, the most incredible story. We like the U.S. government couldn't do shit about it, but Dennis Rodman, the secret weapon, the secret weapon, the, our secret, the bull secret weapon. The I mean, like, imagine if like I know Brittany Griner, uh, she's she's a homosexual, but imagine if Dennis Rodman and Brittany Griner had a kid. Like that would be the ultimate fucking rebounding basketball player of all time. Yes. That would it would just be like it, he would be that 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 kid male or female. He or she. Yeah, it doesn't matter. She they'll be playing in the NBA come senior year of high school. Cuz yes. by that point, I mean people are just going to go straight from high school to the NBA. They just dunk and rebound. Dunk and rebound. That's all they're going to do. Yeah. It's yeah. But yeah, so let's see. They might I hope he does. I hope he does. He's going to Russia. We'll see how this uh, plays out. But, um, yeah. I thought that was funny. Stay tuned. Stay fucking tuned. <laughs> you got anything else? Uh, I think that's about it. Um, oh, Albert Pujols is making a run for 700. Yeah, right? You, you saw that? Yes. Um, I'm pretty pumped. I, I, I've always liked Albert Pujols. I thought he was fucking amazing. I'm glad he got off the Angels because they are just – they are the they, – the, Ultimate franchise for just like wasting the best talent. It's insane. The owner doesn't even want the Angels anymore. Right? Oh God. Maybe <laughs> just relocate the team. Relocate the Bring team. Bring it to or... New Orleans. Come on. Ah. I want a t- I want a baseball team. Right. Bring it to New Orleans. We'll. Uh, we. I like Mike Trout. I like Shohei Otani. We could do it. We'll try to make some room somewhere. Yeah. Oh, and the Yankees suck. <laughs> The Yankees, they they have except for, so much, except for Judge. Well, in Judge, he he's actually been on a cold streak up until about what two days ago when he hit that home run. He was on a fucking he he, did, he didn't get a hit for a while. It was wild, but yeah, that was talking baseball because we we know a lot about baseball. Of course. Oh, I can't wait till next week. We get to recap some football, man. That's gonna be fucking awesome. It's gonna be awesome. We get We're- to recap football, preview the weekend. Man, it's oh, it's gonna be back. Life will be back. Yep. So it was a little short. Uh, episode today was a little short, just because there wasn't too too much to talk about. But I promise you, next week we will have way more, way more, way way more. All right. You got anything else, Joe? Uh, that's about it. All right. We'll see y'all next week. Later. Love you.